Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is Joe Garcia, founding and global ambassador of uh, NHT Global. I'm uh, very excited about uh, introducing our guest speaker here today, uh, Ms. Uh, Helen Svensson from Gothenburg, Sweden. You know, Helen and I uh, had the opportunity uh, to, I, I had the honor and the opportunity to be introduced to Helen uh, well over a year ago as her sponsor, Dalibor Strop, the great leader in Prague, uh, Czech Republic. Uh, they met on the internet. Helen will share the, with the story, and uh, he immediately three-wayed me into, uh, uh, as a good distributor would do, three-wayed uh, me into Helen, and right away, within the 30 seconds that we were chatting, I knew we had a superstar here. And I, after the, um, after the call, Helen decided that she was going to get started with us, and I immediately got on with Dalibor, and I said, Dalibor. We got to do whatever it takes to take care of this woman because I can see her being a top leader here with NH2 Global. And uh, uh, you know, sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, you don't know. Um, you know, some will some, the people that you feel that will do it usually at times don't do it. The people that you feel that won't do it uh, will do it. You know, uh, that surprise there. But Helen, I just had a gut feeling. You know, she was talented. She was respectful, she was confident, she was focused. You know, that was the vibes that I was getting from her. And uh, sure enough, uh, I was right. Uh, had the opportunity to head over to Sweden, beautiful city of Gothenburg in, in um, I believe, April last year. And uh, we had a couple of events. Uh, in, I'll just show you how focused Helen is. She wasn't happy with the turnout. And something clicked into insiders from then on in that she was going to, you know, explode her business. And in the last 90 days, she has one of the fastest growing teams globally. She has the fastest growing and biggest team in Europe. You imagine Sweden uh, is one of the smaller countries in Europe. And, uh, you know, Dan Cato, uh, global ambassador, my business partner, was just there. And the business has absolutely exploded here in the last few months, thanks to this lady. So I cannot say enough incredible things about her. I'm going to let her talk. She's going to share her story. She's going to share her systems that she has used to explode her business, what she's done on a daily basis to get her where she is today. And it's really, truly an honor, uh, Ellen, for you to be on here today. And uh, I'm going to turn it over to you. Okay, thank you, Joe. Uh, first of all, it's an honor for me to be on the call, and I'm really excited to share what I'm doing. And uh, I've got a couple of emails, and oh, I'm so excited to hear about your secrets. And I'm sorry to disappoint you. I have no secrets. It's <laughs> just about doing the business. Uh, but before going into that, I just want to share my story a little bit before I joined the NHT. Uh, I was in MLM from, I think it was 1987 up until 2004. <clears throat> and at that time I had some great success and I also had some not great successes. And uh, 2004, the company that I was working with was uh, not, it's not gonna, was not in business anymore. And I decided that that's it, I'm not going to work with MLM anymore. So I started my own franchise organization, which uh, turned out pretty well. I had about 47 franchise holders and I think about 14 employees. And the more we grew, the more I felt that I was in prison. And uh, the more we grew, I had more and more money problems. I had more and more problems with the people I was working with. And it was like a prison, really. And I felt I had to do something else. And I was looking at MLM again because that was like really the only place where I've been where I felt free, where I felt that I can do whatever I want with whomever I want and whenever I want. So I started to look into MLM again and since I made quite a success before, I had a lot of different companies that was approaching me and I started to look into them. and. Um, when uh, one of the companies that I was looking into had, as they told me, some great products. 
but uh, I start trying them out and it um, it wasn't really <laughs> that great. I uh, had one product that I tried that totally knocked out my liver and I got rashes all over and <clears throat> felt very, very bad. Uh, one of my uh, team members actually got in coma, so it wasn't that good. And then uh, I tried another company and uh, they went out of business within a very short period of time. And <clears throat> to me it was important after that that it had to be a company that's been in the business for quite some time, but not that long, so it was like an old company that really didn't, you know, give me the benefit of being exciting and new. So, um, and yeah, that was a lesson for me that uh, not go into any kind of business, because that was really a big thing for me. And then I went and looked for another company. And during this time, I was a management consultant and I was working. So it wasn't that I was uh, not out of business, but I just didn't want to do that anymore. And the worst uh, company I was looking into was one that was, uh, it wasn't just one company, it was actually quite a few. And I just felt how they were juicing people, they were back mouthing. They <clears throat> didn't have respect for pin levels, which I think is pretty important. If someone does the job, then you really want them to be, you know, held high because I, I think that's important. And I even had it one company from the U.S. that I was going to bring into Europe, and they were really tributing me as a leader, and it was really nice. And then I asked them if. Uh, if they had some kind of program for traveling, because I know that's important for people, that they could get some kind of, you know, travel program. And uh, the the owner of the company told me that, uh, uh, sorry for my language now, but this is his words, and he said, who the fuck wants to work with, or go to vacation with the assholes you have to work with every day. And I was so fed up with these, you know, uh, attitudes and people that were really not being nice to other people. And I think that MLM is one of the best things you could work with, but you really have to have leaders that are taking care of the people and working with the guys. So I left that company immediately and I didn't care whatever they promised me because I couldn't work with that kind of guys. So, and then I went into another company and that turned out to be a pyramid scheme, which I missed from the beginning. I should have been more aware of it, but I just felt for the energy and everything, but then it turned out to be just a pyramid scheme. So, uh, <clears throat> at, this, at this point, I just decided that no, probably I'm not going to work with MLM anymore. It's just too screwed up and people are not being so nice. So I was working, as I said, as a management consultant, and I had to, you know, follow the clock. I've never been employed before. This was the first time in my life, and I just hated it. I loved the actual work. I loved to help people and to educate and all that, but I felt so trapped, and I couldn't do anything besides the work, or I had to follow the schedule and all that. So. I just hated it and I felt I had to make a change and I really didn't know what to do. The only thing I knew and still know is uh, MLM is the only thing working for like regular people who wants to get free, get out of the trap as I call it. So um, I knew by heart that I had to make a change and uh, suddenly it just appeared to me. Um, it was kind of a forum where it said, uh, we are looking for leaders in Europe, blah, blah, blah. And I was just looking at, okay, fine, I understand this is an MLM. What company is it? I probably knew it, and uh, I'm going to find out what's, uh, <laughs> what company it is. Uh, so I filled it out, and suddenly I had Dalibor on Skype, Facebook, email. He was, like, all over. And... Um, he started to communicate to me about the business, and uh, I was so, so skeptical. I was just thinking, what's wrong with this company? What am I going to find out? 
but he was such a nice guy and that was like the main issue to me that it had to be leaders that are really uh, caring about the people and not being uh, bad or uh, yeah being people that are really not working with the people but instead taking you know getting them to know um, Oh, how do I say that? Uh, where they are like really manipulating people. So I I just felt that he's he's a great guy, and I was so skeptical. And I started asking questions, and he did a couple of things that I think we all can learn from. First of all, he followed up and he followed through, which is the main thing. He didn't let me go. He was. Uh, really giving me all the answers that I needed uh, but without being pushy he he was just uh, telling me all the information I needed and he was so caring and uh, there is something called reach and withdraw I don't know if you know about this but it's when you reach too much the person on the other end will start withdraw and when you withdraw the people on the other end will start to reach and he had such a good balance on this. And uh, I was asking him, how old is the company? Because, um, as you know, I've been through a couple of companies that was going bankrupt in a very short amount of time. And uh, I think it's the same all over, but at least in Sweden, it's like 90% of all the companies that start go bankrupt within two years, and the other 10% they go bankrupt within five years. So I was so convinced that I was not going to join a company that was less than five years old. And when he told me it was 14 years old, I was so surprised and I was really happy to hear that. But I was also, yeah, surprised that I never heard about this company before. And when he then told me it was on NASDAQ as well, I felt that this is a gold mine. This is something very, very special. So uh, I started asking him a little bit more questions. And he was very fast asking me if I wanted to talk to the founder, Joe Garcia, which we all heard about before. And uh, I said, no, absolutely not. And I started to back off and said, no way, I'm not going to be lured into <laughs> something that I don't want to do. So I, I just backed off, but he was really good at giving me some third-part information like success stories. He shared some links. I got my time to find out everything on YouTube. I, I don't know if there is anything I haven't seen on YouTube. And uh, I was really, really interested in what he was telling me. And he gave me everything I asked for, but he did it in such a good, caring way. So finally, I, I got all the information I needed. And then he asked me again, don't you think it's time now to look uh, and listen to Mr. Garcia? And I said, OK, fine. Um, I got the information I need. Let's do that. And we got on the phone. Me and Joe, and um, I, as Joe said, immediately, I don't think it took even 30 seconds, immediately I felt that this is something special, this is something different. He was ethical. I had some questions that, uh, I don't know if you know this, <laughs> Joe, but I really wanted to test this to see if he was ethical or if it was just to get me in and do the stuff and make him rich, kind of, but it wasn't, not at all. He was so ethical and down to earth, and I felt such, I was so secure that he was really genuine, friendly, and had this high integrity. So I decided to move on and just continue to see what else there is to know about this company. When I started uh, in a company, whatever company it is, it's five things that I'm really looking for. One is the company itself. Is it stable? Will it stay here for another 30, 50, 100 years? Uh, or is it a company that's just the uh, rise and then go away? So I had that checked. I felt that, yeah, this is a company that I can uh, be working for for many, many years. And then the next thing for me was <clears throat> the products. 
is the product really that good? And they showed me a lot of pictures. At this time, I, it was only the facelift that I was interested in this indulgence. So I got all these pictures. I found out that the price was so good, even for customers, and also the ingredients were great. So the products were very important to me. I didn't try it at this time. I just uh, got the information and I felt this is good. So, and then the third thing I'm looking into is the compensation plan. The fourth thing is um, the, uh, the health, the support, what kind of people are they? And I could just check that with a big tick because uh, Joe Garcia really, really gave me the certainty that this is a company where I'm going to get helped. And the fifth and last thing is the timing. And to me, it couldn't be more right in the timing than uh, right now. And when I started, which is about one, one and a half year ago, uh, I was totally blown away that we are the first one now in the Western world. And it's been here for all, now 15 years, but at that time, 14 years, it was, I was totally blown away by that because that was what I've been looking for all these years. So um, uh, after this, I had uh, another talk to Joe. We, we actually talked quite some times, and I, every time I talked to him, I just loved it, and I, I got you know more and more confident about it. And then they sent the products to me. Dalibor sent the product to me. I tried it out. And uh, on my own face, I've, I didn't see that much of a result, but I really liked the feeling. And then I had tr uh, tried it out on a couple of other people, and they got such a great result. And after two weeks or something like that, I also saw big results on myself. So I was pretty convinced, and I, I felt that, okay, if these, this is really working. It's not just Photoshopped or anything like that then this is the company where I'm going to work with. And um, finally, I had the compensation plan. And at this time, uh, I was really convinced that this is the company I'm going to be working with. So I had a friend of mine look into the compensation plan. And he's uh, very good at binary systems. And he has been drawing a couple of them for other companies. So I knew that he knows what he's talking about. And um, he looked at it and I'm telling you my heart was racing and I was so afraid that he was would find something that wasn't wasn't good enough since uh, I really felt that this is the company for me and he looked at it and he was silent for quite some time my heart was just racing and then he said this is honestly the best binary system I've ever seen it has everything and a little bit more. It just don't have the infinity, but it also has this three level where you get extra money. You also get some money for um, the, uh, what's it, what is it called? Where you have the, uh, whatever they are making, you also get a percentage of that, which will help you to get the people work with the guys that are underneath you. So I felt, okay, fine, this is it. This is the company I'm going to work with. And I was so certain that I'm going to be in this company for a very, very long time. So when I've done that, I did my research, my LOA, and I decided to get started. And I found out that there were a couple of different ways to get started. And Platinum was, uh, of course, the one that... Uh, I was going to go for because I was the only one in my mind that you would be working with if you're serious about the business. And then <laughs> Joe was telling me that um, you actually get one year of, um, you don't have to be uh, activate yourself for one year. And from the beginning, I was like, oh no, <laughs> I don't want to tell anyone about this. And Joe was telling me that, well, that's the way it is. You do what you want, but we're not going to change that. That's actually a good thing. And it took me some time to realize that it was actually a good thing because I was used to companies where you had to push people to use the products each month. And uh, if you were qualified for a year, to me that would mean that 
I wouldn't have any products in sale for a year with the people I brought in. But then I realized quite short, uh, like quite uh, shortly, like two, three months, and people were starting to reorder. And that was new to me, and I realized that the products are really that good. So um, anyhow, what I did was I talked to a lot of people, and I had about, I think it was six platinum that was going to start. And I, I had the approach that you are now, if you're going to start now, you will get the best position there is to get in this company. So if uh, you're going to join now, you're going to have to join as a platinum. Otherwise, you're going to have to wait. And that might maybe sound weird, but to me, it's so important because you can't come if you can't commit to two thousand euro, which is uh, what it is with VAT. This problem is not the right business for you. And I'm really still certain about that because if you take like a Triathlon, for example, uh, and you're gonna go for it, and you're gonna uh, be, uh, you know, doing the swimming, the cycling, the running, everything. You need to overcome a lot of barriers. You cannot just go in and think that, okay, I'm gonna do this, and then I'm gonna be fine. It doesn't work like that. And uh, you have to have a certain, you know, very firm goal. <clears throat> you have to work really, really, really hard and you also have to sacrifice a couple of things like if you used to watch TV in the evening or you have to, I don't know, whatever you might like. Um, if you're going to do the triathlon and you're really going to be good at it and you're going to finish it, then you have to have all these things uh, settled before you do that and to me Platinum is the same way, and just a little short story, <laughs> when I was a kid, me and my family used to go to Italy, and my mother, she went out to the water, and she had water up to her knees, and if there was a wave coming, she was screaming like, ah, my God, and she went back into the shore, and <clears throat> that's that to me is uh, bronze, someone that goes in, feel the water, is it lukewarm, will it work for me? And there is one little resistance and that she's gonna, or that person's gonna run back to the shore. But if you have someone that's working for triathlon and really, really wanna do it, they don't care if it's a wave, they are probably gonna be more prepared for big waves than anyone else. And really to me, that is what platinum is all about. And to be honest, I'm not in this for the money. It might sound weird to some of you, but I'm not. Uh, money is great, I love it, and I want a lot of it, but it's really, I'm really into this for the mind. So um, if you have someone that wants to join, uh, they need to push their comfort level, they need to push whatever in order to get more comfortable about the money. And uh, I honestly think that this society is designed to make us trapped, uh, to keep us, you know, uh, limited, holding ourselves back. If, uh, let's for, say, for example, that you finish school and it's just uh, college, whatever, and you don't get that good of a job, you just get a regular job, then you have to work really, really hard and you will end up with no money or the money that just gets you where you are and you will pay your bills and then you need to work another month to get the next to the next uh, month or you will be a doctor or something that uh, gives you a lot of more money but then you have to go to another school I think it's called high school in the US and to do that, you normally start with a loan. You need some extra money just to finish your school. And um, when you do that, uh, you start, you really start your life, your working life uh, with loans. You're stuck. You, you have nothing. You really have nothing. You're on minus. And if you're, let's say, a doctor, that means you need to get a nice car, you need to get a nice house or whatever. 
and you are working really your ass off just to get that uh, going. The, the wheel is like spinning and you have to be in that, you have to be part of that. And to me that's really, really designed to keep us slaves. So um, to me, I, I don't like that at all, but that's the way it is and I am a firm believer in order to break free you have to be coachable and to be coachable means you have to be willing to do whatever it takes and you have to be willing to accept change and when you have someone that's going to start in the business I honestly believe that we are in the best business there is we've never ever been in a business like this uh, well you could win a lottery which is like yeah sure it's not that's not gonna happen or you could be born very rich then you might not need this of course or um, uh, yeah you could build up a big big uh, business yourself and then sell it but that's as I said before 90% are gonna get broke within the first two years so it's, that's not really <clears throat> an option so if you really want to do this and if you and I'm not talking about making the money I'm talking about getting that change in your mind that you really are going to break free, you're going to have the time, you're going to have the money and you're going to have the health. In order to do that you really need to do change, a major change and uh, platinum is just the start of it. So even though uh, we talk about the platinum is great because you get all these products, you get uh, all other stuff and you need that of course in order to do the best as you can but I truly believe that it's about another thing and it's the uh, the mind the the way you think the way you do it and also a little bit outside your comfort comfort zone because there is a saying I think it was Sig Ziglar who said it if you want things to change in your life you have to change things in your life. If you want things to change in your life, you have to change things in your life. And that's really so profound. So uh, to me, getting someone on the platinum package, it's so much more than the price, the products, whatever we might talk about. It's really to get someone outside the comfort zone and to my experience, platinum 2,000 euro is really where most people are when it comes to their um, uh, comfort zone. And still I think it's very, very, very cheap. Um, when I had my franchise business, the people that started, they paid between 4,000 euro and up to hundred thousand euros depending on what kind of a franchise they would get and what they really got was just a piece of paper saying that you are allowed to work in this area and what we are getting is twice almost twice as much in products they are you can sell it you can do whatever so to me it's uh, platinum is uh, absolutely a must it's really not a big thing uh, and when you have this, uh, if uh, if you would be like scared about the money you're gonna invest, then I think the more we can push them with caring, of course, the better it will be for them. I honestly don't think I'm doing anyone a disfavor or being bad to them or ripping them off. To me, it's the opposite. I'm helping them. If I can't push them, if I can't tell them this is what you need then I'm not really helping them because sheep thinking to me equals sheep earning. Big thinking equals big earning. And that's why I bring the people in here. I want them to get changed and switch in their mind. But also they need to uh, dare to risk. If they can't take a risk, then they're not going to be, they're going to be like my mom. They, it's a little wave and the wave is going to be, oh my God, it's too much, I can't do this. But if it's um, if they like prepare for a triathlon, then they're gonna go in there. They're gonna swim. Whatever wave is gonna come up, that's what they're gonna handle, and they're gonna go forward. I'm 
really, really honestly believe that. So I need people in my group that I'm working with that are willing to take a risk, that are willing to do the work and to be there. So um, to me, it was not a big thing to ask my people that started to be platinum or they can come in later, but they had to wait until the guys that are really preparing to do the job were in the top. So anyhow, that was like the reason for me to get, get them into platinum and I still think that's the thing. It's uh, all about the mind game that we're in, and not in a bad way, but mind as you have to increase the way you think, you have to increase your mind and push it a little bit forward. So I, anyhow, I got started. I, my first year was um, a little bit trial and errors. I tried to find a system. How do we do this job? How do we work this? And we started with home presentations, which was uh, pretty nice, but uh, really, we all got into just a product mood instead of changing people people's minds. And as I said before, that's not really why I'm here. I we have great products, and we need those products. But the products is still just products. And I think it's so much bigger to get someone to switch and change their mind and feel that they can actually create whatever they want with whomever they want and whenever they want. So um, uh, I was doing these trial and errors, and then I had Thomas Knappik coming here, and uh, he was such a nice guy, and uh, he's Dalibor sponsor, and he came even though I only had like five, ten people, and he did a great job, and he got me back on track when it came to MLM and all that thinking. <clears throat> so he was... Um, it was really needed to get in here even though it was so little people. And I felt that we really grew slow, slower than I wanted and I was expecting. And then uh, Garth came here and we had about 70 people. He was also doing an excellent job. But I felt that I wasn't doing enough and I really didn't feel good about this. And then I started to find excuses not to do the business. I was uh, seeing that, uh, well, it's so much easier to stay in bed or do my normal job, and maybe this will take longer. And yeah, I was just uh, having all these excuses not to do the job. And um, I know that good or bad, the result is up to me. And uh, I can either do the job or not do the job. And it's uh, both ways are easy. It's easy to do the job, but it's also easy not to do it. And unfortunately, I more and more lean into not doing the job because it was coming in. Some people were buying the products since, as I said, it's great products. And I, I just felt that, well, maybe this is the way to do it. And Oh, I can't go that fast. And I started to convince myself that this is really not going to go that fast. And I also heard people telling me that this business is not, a, uh, I don't know how you say that, but it's something like it's not a fast track, but it's actually a marathon. And I used that as an excuse. Yeah, you're right. It's a marathon. It's going to take some time. And I had my other business, and I could do that. And uh, then I also had one guy who was telling me that he was going to do it and he was really going to work with me and suddenly I felt that my, uh, work, my job was really up to him. So when he didn't do it, I just felt that it was his fault, not mine. And we sold about, I think, 150 or 200 tickets uh, to the event where Joe was going to come as he was telling you in the beginning. And uh, I was like satisfied with that. But somehow I felt down deep in my side that those tickets are not sold. They're actually not in the hands of people. And it always has consequences when you don't do the job yourself. So Joe came and I was really excited. And I think we had like 30 people or something showing up. And I was so ashamed. It really hit me that 
I haven't done my job and I cannot continue trusting other people to do my job. And he was such a sweetheart and he was telling me that, well, Helen, that's fine. At least the right people are here. And they were, of course they were, but uh, I knew that I didn't do my job. And I honestly, I never felt that ashamed as I did at that time. So I said, that's it, period. I am going to do this. No matter what, I have to change my behavior. I am going to do this. And when it comes to responsibility, the word self actually means ability to respond, which means my responding was really bad at that time. I was whining. I was putting it in charge of other people if I was going to do my business. So I said to myself, I have to take full responsibility for my business. There is a saying which is success is a decision away. And this was my decision, my defining moment. I just realized that it had to stop. If I'm in the best business I've ever been into, honestly, it has the best uh, company, the best products, the best compensation plan, the best leaders, and such a great timing. And I'm not doing it. It's so not okay. And as I said, I was so embarrassed. I didn't even want to go out and have dinner with Joe because I felt, I felt so bad. So um, I said, that's it, period. I was thinking for a day or two, how am I going to change this? How am I going to switch this to something good instead? And uh, I called Dan, or I didn't call him, I was sending him an email and I was asking him, please, please, is there any way that I can take your time? And I felt that I didn't deserve it at all because I did such a lousy job. Uh, and he was just answering me back in, in such a good way and telling me that, sure, Helen, of course I'm going to help you if you need my help. And we decided to have half an hour every week where we were talking and he was giving me all these kind of good advice and we were talking about plans and goals and I knew that I cannot do this one more time. I did it with Joe. I cannot do it with Dan as well. So uh, whatever he's telling me that I have to do, I'm going to do it and I'm going to even do better than I did or that he was expecting. So I think this, my decision was in, I think it was in June or July and I just had 400% increase the next month. And from there on, I doubled it every single month until September. Then there was something that happened. And I felt the, like the old ways, like, oh, I'm not going to do this. And oh, it's so bad. I'm so bad. And I, I got a victim instead of being at cause. So I, fortunately, I realized it pretty fast. And I decided that this is not going to happen. And uh, after that, I think so far in October, we actually tripled the volume. And October is still another week to go. So. I'm very pleased now, but I know, and I want you to know that it's all about you. It has nothing to do with your group, even though the group, you have to work with the group and all that, but it's really, really a decision away. You have to make that decision yourself. And um, I am working a lot with the IRP, uh, and it's still the same thing that with the platinum. You have to push, you have to push, you have to push and get to the next level. And there is another saying which is, what your mind is willing to achieve, it can conceive. If you are writing anything down, I think this is it. What your mind is willing to achieve, it can conceive. So the IRP is really what it's all about. If you are uh, just a distributor, you don't have a uh, rank yet, just look at the first one. Can, can I achieve that? Is that something I'm willing to achieve? <clears throat> and really, this business is not about the money. It's all about who you will become on this journey. Just look at the next pin and see, can I go there? What do I need to do in order to get there? And it might be different things than 
uh, just getting the people there. It could actually be things like, I have to act like a leader, I have to dress like a leader, I have to be shape my uh, speaking up a little bit. Just whatever it takes to do the next step. And it's like eating an elephant. How do you do that? Well, step by step, or bite by bite. So we are changing people. That's what we are all about. That's what we're doing. And I think that's so much more important than looking into the money itself. Like, oh, this leg is so big and I'm not getting any money now. It's not about that. It's about the people that are in that leg. You still need to work with them. You still need to help them. Because if you, if you get that feeling yourself, and this is really, if you talk about secrets, this is really my secret. It's to help whoever is need, who wants help and whoever is doing the job. So um, the thing is that the comfort zone, we have this uh, right at the end of the comfort zone where you have small thinking, big thinking. And our job as sponsors, as distributors, is to get our group, our people, to get pushed a little bit more over to that side. And if you think you're doing them a disfavor, you really have to think again. Because what you're doing when you're not pushing them is you're telling them that they don't deserve more. They don't deserve uh, success. So um, the IRP is, to me, the perfect goal, goal, the perfect tool, the perfect way to get people to the next level, to the next uh, part of where they are getting more and more free and able to do whatever they want to do. And I think as a duty of a sponsor, it is to help the person on their level. Wherever they are, they need to get another step and it, as I said, it could be something else, it could be training, it could be whatever, but they need to get further as people, as human beings. And there is a saying which is, leaders are readers, and that's so important. I truly, truly believe that we are not in this uh, money business, we're in people business. We have to help people to grow. and. Another thing I just have to mention is that your group, the people you have, they are not in the business to make you rich. You are in the business to make them rich. And rich is not just money, as I said, it's in all walks of life. So um, I think my main thing is that I'm actually trying to serve the people that are in my group. There are four different ways of exchange, exchange levels, and exchange is what we are getting paid for. The first one is criminals, like they are just taking whatever they want to take. Uh, we're not in that business, hopefully. <laughs> and then you have number two, which is to give less than expected. It's you sign someone up and then you don't really care about them, you don't give them what they need. And then there is the third, which is giving what is expected. And that one is, yeah, someone signs up, you do whatever you have to do, not more, not less. And then the fourth one is to give in abundance. And I really think that is the key. If we bring someone in, then we give them more than they're expecting. In that way, they are really gonna do their job and you will get back. I'm, promising you, you will get back more than you ever expected. So just to wrap it up, the most important as a distributor or a leader is push hard. Push really, really hard, but do it with care. Like you're caring for the person in front of you, but you're pushing it. You're pushing the platinum. You're pushing that they are going to go all in. They need the books. They need to be on every event. They need to do everything that you know that need to do. Push the IRP. Push it hard, but do it with care, because that's what it's all about. Like taking care of the person in front of you, and they're going to give ten times back. And serve, serve, serve your group with exchange for, like in abundance. And the last thing for my success so far 
is to take full responsibility for your own success because that's the way to do it and you probably heard it all before it's no secrets it's nothing magical that I'm doing I'm just doing the basics and this is it be coachable be trainable make sure you are always learning new stuff and be willing to make those changes whatever it needs whatever it's needed like if you have to turn up the TV and it's your favorite program then do it because th that's really what's going to show how willing you are to be coachable and to be teachable is what are you willing to sacrifice if you're not willing to sacrifice anything well you're going to stay where you are because whatever you did so far took you to where you are and if you want to get a change you really have to change it I think Einstein was the one who said that so that's really Joe that's really what I had to say right now about what I'm doing and I'm sure people wanted to hear more like uh, the secrets what am I doing but this is really what I'm doing work with your heart take care of the people and yeah really get going out there talk to a lot of people talk to all the people you know are you there Joe Joe? Okay, I guess he's not, he's not here. So, but with that, I'm just going to end the webinar then and say that um, I hope we'll all be ambassadors within a couple of years and I'll see you all, including myself, of course, in Hawaii. So, yes, thank you. oh, there I you are. Sure. Great. I was, I was on mute and I couldn't unmute. <laughs> okay, cool. But awesome, awesome, incredible job here today. I uh, spoke like a true leader. I've got actually one question for you. Yes? Okay, so we've got one more week to go to the end of the first, of the third quarter of the IRP. Mm -hmm. uh, and what are you doing this week uh, closing the, the quarter? Uh, closing uh, the month. First so let, of all. Let me just share with everybody that in the IRP, it's real important to understand that you have to qualify two out of the three months for the ranks. And to look at the ranks, uh, you can go up on Steam Team under first 90 days. We have a training on the IRP. It's up on your NHD Global website under highlights uh, to learn about more about the ranks. So, Helen, that's my question to you. What are you going to do in the next week? Well, first of all, I did this, bar uh, I don't know what it's called, barometer or something where you have like, where you fill out on your left and your right how much you have to reach in order to get to the next rank. Uh, I did that, but then I realized last week that I actually made that. So I, I, I did put a new pin and... Uh, uh, what I'm doing is I'm always, always, always talking about the IRP to people and get them them to the next level. It's not about me, as I said before. It's all about my group. So I'm talking to them. What is your next PIM? What is your goal? Where are you going to go? Uh, but then I also realized that one of my legs are not as uh, high as the other one. So I'm having a lot of meetings myself because I really want to you know, be in balance. So what I'm doing is I'm pushing the people to reach their next goal, their level, and also I'm working really hard to get um, more people in by myself because I think that's important as well. Uh, there is this other saying to be uh, fat and happy. <laughs> I don't want to be neither. So uh, happy, of course, but I don't want to be fat, which means that you're just sitting on a chair doing nothing and just being a, like not a leader but instead a manager and I'm so afraid of being that so what I'm doing is I'm working really hard myself right now to reach to the next level by myself and then help people doing it themselves as well yes the last question I have for you is pro and probably I'm gonna go there's another question there's another question <laughs> the last question uh, so when I was in there in April um, and uh, on the Saturday we had the actual uh, event and then on the Sunday we had uh, a training mm -hmm. and then after the training a lot of your team members had um, uh, meetings with me 
right? Uh, that whole Sunday. So uh, Dan was just there. He was there for four days, correct? Mm hmm. Okay. And he had set up meetings all day long with your people. Uh, they brought prospects, and then there was the event. So, how important uh, are events to growing a business? Uh, I want to have everybody understand how important the events are and what how you've used it to build. Oh, it's business. it's everything. I would say it's everything, uh, and I would say that sitting down one on one, two on one, is like eighty five percent, or yeah, eighty five percent of your time. Uh, but you would get 5% of the result and then you have uh, like business meetings is 15% of the time, 15% of your result and then event is probably 5% of your time but it gives you 80% of the result and if I look at my, my own statistic, um, I tripled the volume right after Dan was here uh, together with, uh, I call him Dr. Omega, was here as well. So Dan, uh, without the event, without him, it wouldn't have happened. So it's everything. So, so would it be safe to say that you're sharing with the whole NHT world that if you want to build your own local market and build teams in other markets, that they would have to So You started off with home briefings, right? Mm -hmm. Home presentations. And then you segued the, into the events at, at hotel meetings, correct? That's correct. And then you promoted the next step to come to the company events, like you did right. in August, correct? Oh yeah, you're right. And uh, that, that's we're going to end with that. How did that? You know, so how did that really? So you had me in April, then I believe um, Dalibor came back in June, and then mm -hmm. and then in August you had your team go to Hong Kong. So how did the belief grow within yourself? We know you've explained it today, but how did the belief grow with your, your people? With oh, one, I wouldn't say 100%, I would say 1,000%. Uh, they saw the big picture and so did I. And uh, I've been to a couple of big events before, uh, but for me this was the best event I've ever been to. It's, it was so everything into the smallest details were just there. and. It gave me the security of this is the company where to work and for those that never been to a big event it was mind-blowing and it was for me as well it was unbelievable so I'm sure that the people that were on the event they will never leave NHT because they know how big it is and how wonderful company it is so yes. I would say once again say events is everything and we're going to leave with the picture I have right up on, um, on the screen is our little cocktail par party and <laughs> a lot of your team there. You can see yes. all the smiling faces uh, in yeah. Hong Kong. Uh, Helen, this has been fantastic, incredible. Um, it you were flourishing throughout the whole presentation. There's not enough adjectives to show <laughs> how great you were. Um, and one thing I got from this presentation, and I can remember when you and I, uh, we did the training on the Sunday and we talked about leaders lead by example. Mm -hmm. And the best kind of leaders are all those ones out there leading by example and you are the epitome of leading by example. So thanks very much. Have a great day everyone. This, thanks this, you, everyone. Yeah, and this presentation, this training has been recorded and it will be up on Steam Team uh, later on today. Bye-bye. Thanks Helen again. Thank you and bye-bye.